Hello and welcome back to the Kerbal Space Program. My name is Thank You Brute and let's get cracky with some more hard mode. Uh, we're here, we're looking at my habitat module uh, for Starlight Station. I've been working on this steadily and kind of had the bare bones and now I've uh, fleshed it out to be hopefully something that'll work nicely. Now, um, I'll just run through what uh, what's going to go into this rocket and how it's all going to work. Now I've got my a standard um, it's not really a standard, it's actually a, a modified lifter stage that I'm going to modify it uh, further shortly um, to give it a bit of thrust to weight ratio. Now, after that stage, we've got my standard tug. Now, I've made some um, modifications to the tug itself. It sits in here, so I'll just take that away. And if I just take, uh, take this away. This is my tug. Um, that's how it flies. So it's got a docking port at one end, RCS control, and what I've done is I've added on the, a couple of parachutes and some RCS control. Sorry, not RCS control, but a, um, a heat shield. So underneath, underneath this uh, decoupler is a heat shield, so that I can re-enter with this craft. Oops. Okay. So let's put this back together. See that that hides away nicely. Yeah. Now this is my habitat module. Now I'll just run through what the thoughts are. On Starlight Station, I plan to have six Kerbals on station at any one particular time. What that means is I'm actually going to have to have life support for them because I am playing with tack life support, and that just adds in an extra challenge, um, for better or for worse. Now. With these two Kerbal containers, plus the science modules that are already up there, plus the escape module when I put it up there, we're going to have plenty of crew capacity. However, what we um, I want to do is I want to make sure that in this little habitat and life support module, um, we have the life support for them. So using the TAC life support build aid, we can see what is going to happen. So we've got enough food for 154 days, we've got enough water for 154 days, enough oxygen for 154 days, and uh, enough waste capacity. Now, look, uh, I'll just show you where I've hidden them, and see that they're underneath these docking ports, which is on a radial attachment point. Now, the reason I've done this is because I just noticed that um, the docking port on the end of my laboratory module is actually balked as well. It looks something like this, which is upside down. And the reason for that is when you're building in the VAB here, that attaches really nice. You see that? But this is backwards. When you uh, move this away, okay, it's on backwards. And when you build something like this on, uh, you know, when you decouple this node, it comes away and you're left with a, um, a useless port basically. So that's happened to me twice and it may have happened more up there, but I've, um, I know I've got that right because I checked it. You can, oops, oops, you can see that that is the right way and that is the right way as well. So it's all sitting there nice. Um, so I've added these extra docking ports to, um, you know, just give a bit of extra berthing capacity should we need it. Uh, actually, let me just think about this for a moment. I'd really like them away a little bit. It's going to add an extra ton. Let's have a look at it. I think that's what we need to do, to be honest. This thing's going to fly horribly. <laughs> uh, I can hear Far in the background just rubbing its hands and waiting for me to try and launch this thing. Right. Well, I think that's... Um, we can see that the life support's good enough. Um, I plan to rotate the crew every 100 days um, with um, supply flights every 100 days as well, for example. Um, so we'll just change, change these things over and 
and get it so that we're um, we're maintaining a station in orbit, which I'm really looking forward to. I think it's going to be really really cool. Uh, so we've got this, we've got that. Um, what else do we need really? Do we need anything else? We probably need an aerodynamic nose cone. Structural first. We'll grab the nose cone. These separatrons work really well as a nose cone separator. And we'll just uh, do something like that. Looks good to me. Right, let's get all of this uh, staged up correctly. Okay, that's nose cone separation there. These can probably go with nose cone separation. They're going to be before that. That's going to be in a stage of its own. Needs to be in there with that. Okay, so what is this? Yep, okay, so that's that. So we're going to decouple the docking port, we're just going to, you know, dispose of that. But hopefully we'll be able to land this entire um, tug back to Kerbin. <laughs> hopefully. I just want to, whoops. just want to check something quickly. Yes, we do have reflectotrons on there. This means that we should have communications when we deorbit. Okay, so let's uh, just get this delta V figure right. Now what we're going to need is these bad boys, I'm thinking. Just to give it a bit of an extra kick. On the way to orbit. Right, let's have a look. 1.92, 4 point. Yeah, we're close. Four and a half. Let's just grab a nose cone for these. thinking this rocket's ready to go. Know what? It uh, needs more struts. Looks 
as ugly a sin, but that should hold firm. Won't matter once we get it in space. Alright. Let's go have a crack at it. And see if we can get it docked up to the station. Actually, the station's nearly overhead. I'll just move it around a little bit. You can see my three probes. They're the three original tugs. They're currently deorbiting. Here is the question. When do we launch? Let me just get in here for a moment and just check that there's no Kerbals on board. Oops. Yeah, I think it looks good. We're up. Staging looks correct. Oh, come on, throw it up. snapping a bit there. Tell you, this thing's. We're going to be mighty close for this. To target mode. We'll just stage our nose cone and our fairings. And hopefully they don't snag up on the street. Oh, and they don't. Bye bye, nose cone. That's what I'm talking about. I'm thinking we're not going to make it. Nah, she's too far in front. Okay, so we'll have to do this the old fashioned way. Yeah, that's fine. Just 
press 1 to deploy everything. Hopefully they don't foul up on the struts because that would really upset me. Now we're not going to have enough Delta V for this. Yay, space. What we'll do is just use this to burn all the way to the uh, depletion point. Actually, we probably need to wait a little bit more because we're pushing our apoapsis up too much. This rocket's a big lumbering thing, I tell you. This, this is problematic. Just need to get through this fuel a bit quicker. That's a close approach. Maybe it's not. Maybe it is. strategy to try and figure out what the fuck I'm doing wrong. to the burn, we'll just fast forward a bit, we should have enough charge, whoops, no. Thank you. 
This is what's up. Ah, yes, to the to the rescue. I can, I can work with point four. That I can work with. Now, what we need to do is just come out here for a moment. Where the hell are we on the map? See, that's coming in as a ship, and currently that's filtered out on my search. So let's make it a station. Because it is part of the station. Okay, so we've got the close approach coming up. We're in target mode, which is good. Oops, we need to turn off RCS. Brakes, go back. It's going to kill all of our t relative velocity, which shouldn't take much. Okay, we're about... Slow down. We're about 20 seconds to... And we're under... slowing down a bit early here. Oops, nope. Fuck. Wrong way. Should have plenty of juice to manoeuvre with. Okay, we need to spin around quickly. Quickly being the operative word. And get ready to break. Okay, there we go. So we have Starlight Station in our sights. Oops. Alrighty, -o. now we'll just turn that back on again. So it gives me a good idea of distance. We'll just turn off RCS for the moment. Uh oh. No. Okay, good. I was thinking, shit, that's telling me it's on backwards again.
Okay, here we go. So let us turn on RCS. We'll just null out this velocity. Okay, now we can start working on these uh, these vectors. So I'm doing this two axes at once, which is a little bit tricky. Hell, well, what's wrong with the challenge? Let's go in three axes at once. Thanks, auto save. Now, decision time. We'll just null out this velocity very quickly. Um, do we do it like this, or do we spin it like this? It's going to make more sense. I'm thinking like this. We'll get it perfectly 90 degrees up. Get you pointed in the right direction. Yep. Go. Let's turn the RCS back on. Let's see what's going on here. Okay. We're just drifting, that's all. down, thrust forward. In we go. Easy really. Now apparently I um, I pack way too much RCS when I do this. Habitat module in space, and we're full of. Yeah, we're full of that. Let's pull up the fuel balancer, and uh, oh, that's full as well. Hmm. Apparently, I packed. I packed way too much everything. Hmm. Anyway, uh, so we've got our. Wait, I don't, I don't want that. Go away. Turn off. It's got plenty of oxygen, f water, and food. Yeah, we literally used 40 RCS getting this here. <laughs> okay, let's uh, let's deal with it. Draw from here. Decouple. Let's just jump quickly to the map. Have a look at the information screen. 77 parts, 44 tons. We're doing uh, doing well. Okay, turn on RCS, thrust back. Get away from the station. We just need to go downwards a little bit. Because what we're going to do is I'm going to attempt to deorbit this thing. And this is going to be a bit of a test to see how it goes. Now where is... There is KSC. Okay.
Yeah, this is going to be a pretty aggressive uh, deorbit burn. So we're going to go, I don't know, in the water here somewhere. You can see the G loading ramping up. Yep, I like that. Eh, a little bit more. I like that. Okay, so we've got our deorbit burn set up. Now what we're going to do is we're going to... Double. Oh, no, 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 no. Yes. Have we... Yes, we still have control. Excellent. Stressing me out, man. Okay. Why does it seem like we're moving? Oh, that might be on backwards. That's funny. Just uh, get the craft oh, orientated. I think it'll be, need to be about there. By the time we flip around and then start to interface with the atmosphere, we'll just press one. There it goes. No, our antennas are still out. Oh, Houston, we've had a malfunction in the antennas. I don't want to retract. Yep. Well, that's going to be the first thing we lose. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to leave our RCS on, because that will help us maintain attitude as we fly through the planet. Let's have a quick look and see where we're aiming. It's not too bad. Oh. Um... There's KC there. Hmm. No, well, we're much too low for any any adjustments now. We just need to ride her in. Just accelerate a bit more. All right, here we go. So I think we're going to lose these at at minimum. Yep, we're going to lose parachutes too. This is going to be good. Oh, this fucking heat shield useless. I think we might be in for a powered landing here. Go. Just keep spinning the craft. Try and move the heat around. Oh, we have no connection. Oh, this gets better and better. This gets better and better. Yep, this is going to be good. It's just because we have nothing within range. Do we? Looks like we've lost the reflectotrons, which explains why we can't communicate with it. This is going to make a big splash. Moral of the story, that heat shield is freaking useless. I'm 
didn't see what other heat shields were supposed to use. Mm. That's a bugger. Oh well. So ends uh, this episode of KSP Hard Mode. Uh, we put the habitat module up and we crashed a tug. Oh, I can't see it. Anyway. Thank you very much for joining me. I'll look forward to seeing you in the next episode where we continue on our journey to uh, run a successful space program. <laughs> the success bit is optional, just by the way. Look forward to seeing you then.